Okay, today I'm going to do a quick Lightroom edit to kind of demonstrate how to remove purple fringing uh, both automatically and manually and when you want to do it manually versus automatically. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit this picture over here. And I was at the dog park yesterday and I was using my um, Olympus Pen F with a vintage uh, Nikon lens. And you can see all of this purple fringing. And what most people do is, you know, they, you know, you can go right over here to lens correction, click on the color. You know, click this, check this box. That doesn't do anything. What you need to do is take the eyedropper, move over here, and try and pick sort of the deepest purple color you can in this case. And click the mouse and bang. And Lightroom really did a nice job of eliminating all of this purple fringing. You know, down here in the hair, uh, not a bad job. Over here, obviously in the nose and around the uh, fur. But, you know, I'll always back out and I'll turn the purple fringing on and off because what I'm looking for here, say down here in the fur, I want to make sure it didn't mess up the color too much because when you do uh, defringing, what Lightroom is doing is going around to the, all the high contrast areas and eliminating the purple color around the high contrast areas. So, for example, you know, right up in here is high contrast, maybe down here in the teeth, you know, along the paw. And it did a good job, but I do see a problem. And it's not obvious, so let me zoom in on the tongue here. Look, look what happened to the tongue when I did the uh, automatic defringing with the eyedropper. It looks like he has, you know, a sick tongue here, right? Because all these little bubbles on his tongue are high contrast relative to the rest of his tongue. So I'll show you here. I'll turn this off. And now it's kind of back to normal, right? Turn it back on. Yuck. Turn it off. Okay, so because I'm getting that sort of side effect by using the automatic tur purple defringing, I'm going to do it manually. And it's, it, it's almost as easy to do. You just go up here. and we're, I'm going to use the brush tool here. And I always double click on the effects button, or it's not a button, but the text here. And what that does is it resets everything back to zero. So even if I have all these in different places, I'll double click and you can see these are all back to zero. And right down here at the bottom is the defringe slider. So I'm going to crank that all the way up to 100. And now I can just go in and defringe just the parts of the picture I want to. I'll do that real quick and you can see that it's getting rid of all of that purple. Um, it's a little bit in here. I'll go down here and I'm going to make the brush a little smaller and go in here. And that's good enough. And just ignore that I'm slightly out of focus. I mean, I was manually focusing, for God's sake. But let me check down here. Really not much on the teeth, but I'll take a little bit off. Down in here. Maybe here. Okay, and then down here in the sun. It's a little bit on his paw, so I'll do some in here. And 
That looks good. And then I remember there was some back here in his hair. Or fur, I should call it. And let me just make the brush huge and just do it this way. It doesn't do as good a job when you use a large brush. So what you'll see is when I make the brush smaller, and it must be something in the formula, you know, to defringe. It's a little bit here. And I think, honestly, that's good enough for this picture. Okay, so let's turn the brush off and back out. And now, you know, I've defringed the nose and the fur and the paw without messing up the tongue. And that pretty much sums it up. So, A, that's how you automatically defringe the entire picture, but just be careful that it doesn't mess up other parts of the picture or mess up the color overall in the picture. And then when automatic defringing messes with the picture in other areas you don't want it to, then this is how you can go in and manually defringe the, the pictures uh, just using a brush tool. Okay, and that's, that's about it. I hope that helps. Um, from here, I'm going to go ahead and finish editing this picture to make it more look like the, the other one I showed you here. Uh, you know, so if you want to follow along from this point, you're welcome to. If not, um, thanks for watching, and I um, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Okay, so let's go ahead and develop this picture a little bit further. Um, I've already defringed it, so really all I need to do is a couple other things. Cause, and, and everything from here is basically a creative choice, but, you know, I don't want this dog in here or that bowl and there's this little tuft of fur over here that I want to crop out and since all of his feet are cropped out I, I really don't need this paw in here because I don't have the whole thing so I'm gonna crop off a lot of that paw too because it looks kind of funny if you just have a partial paw and I, personally, I like to use this Fibonacci type circle. And what I did to get here, I'm sorry, is I just hit the letter R key on my keyboard. So if I do that again, that's the letter R. If I click it again, it takes me right into this crop tool. Now the other thing I'm noticing here, and, and you want to try and get the focus point of your subject in this circle, and then everything else has to kind of fit around in here. And that's really about as close as I can get it on this picture, it looks like. Um, so that's that's pretty good. And the other thing I noticed is, you know, this dog was kind of sitting on a hill a little bit. This is not really a flat area. So it looks a little crooked to me, so I'm going to go ahead and straighten it out. And the way I choose is... Um, I'm looking at the eyes here, and I want these eyes to be level. So using the lines, I'll try and get that about right. And that looks pretty good, even though in real life this is a crooked picture. But for Facebook and Flickr, that that looks right. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're doing pretty good. The other thing I don't like in the picture here is the picnic table bars. But these are a little bit too close to his body for me to fix properly. But this one is not. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I just use this tool here. And you can look at my settings. But you see how there's two circles. One is the feather circle. The inner circle is the area that's affected 100%. So I want to widen the circle so it covers that bar entirely. And I'm going to start here. And then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it down to about there. 
And I'm not crazy about the area that Lightroom picked. Because it, it's a little, see, see like in the upper left, it, it picked up a little bit of the dog's fur. So I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. Move it up. Move it up a little more. There, that, that looks pretty good. And generally when you're using this um, healing tool, you want to pick a spot that's on the same sort of focus plane as the spot you're trying to fix. Because, you know, if I pick down here, obviously the focus plane is different, so I'm, I'm healing this with a focused area, and that's not what we want. We want to try to pick sort of the same focus plane. Let's go back there. Okay, very good. That's not bad. Um, and then, this lens, I like to use a little bit of medium contrast on it, uh, particularly on this photo because I did have some sun peeking into the lens. So I'm going to go here to Tone Curve and select Medium. And that looks a lot better right away to me. Um, another trick I do to kind of speed things up is I'll, I'll click the auto button here because what this does is it, it it slides the blacks and pushes the whites so that you know I, I kind of get the maximum dynamic range out of this picture and then I'm going to reset the exposure back to zero by double clicking on it and then manually adjust the whites and blacks now the whites you notice it didn't do anything so let's let's click on the alt key then click on this slider and you can see that these little white areas is where the picture's clipping and and I'm gonna slide this down as much as I can um, and I'm still having some clipping here so if I still have clipping what I'll do is I'll go to the highlight area and I'll slide this down. Oops, that's too much. I'm going to come back a little bit until I just see a hint of clipping there. Now there's a little white dot. And that looks good. Okay, the other problem with this picture is, to me, is that it's, it's a little bit bland. There's not really enough color here. Uh, so what I'll do is... I'll pump up the saturation until I'm kind of happy with how that looks. And that looks better, but the problem I'm having now is this area here, there's there's not much color. And and now the color on the dog maybe is a little bit too strong. So I'm going to reduce the strong colors by reducing vibrance. And the vibrance slider is basically affecting only the strongest colors in the picture. So let me turn that down to where I think the dog's colors kind of match the background in terms of intensity. And then I'm going to crank the saturation up again. Wow, I had to go all the way to 100%. Let me pump up the vibrance a little bit. Okay, that's good. The other problem I'm seeing with this picture is the white balance now looks a little bit off to me. So this was kind of in a cloudy or shaded area, but not quite. It's kind of a mix of shade and sun. So I'm going to pick cloudy. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I think um, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Let me pump up the shadows a little bit and check my highlights again because when you see this arrow and this arrow um, white, that means something is clipping. And if you keep your mouse over it, you'll notice, like watch right here when I put my mouse over this arrow. See how that turns red? It's telling me it's being clipped. So I'll go back down here. I'll hit the Alt key, click on this, and back off again. There. That's better. 
And then, let me just look at it manually. That's too much. Yeah, I think minus 29. Right there looks about good. Minus 26. Okay. Uh, let me turn the saturation down just a little bit. Now it's looking a little bit too strong. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I also like to always add a little bit of vignette. So what I do is I, I just make the vignette really strong. I move the midpoint almost to dead center. And then I feather it out. Okay. And let me move the uh, vignetting off again. Maybe to about, let's bring it down. That looks pretty good. I actually, I kind of like that look. Let me bring up the exposure a little bit now. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's about all I really want to do with this picture. I mean, I'm about 90% there. Sometimes I'll just walk away and come back the next day and look at it again and see what I think. But, um, you know, just for a quick edit, that's not too bad. All right, so that now I'm done. So, again, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you learned a couple things. And um, I'm going to make some more videos uh, as I think about them. So go ahead and subscribe. And uh, again, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.